Because <laughs> I usually don't. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and joining us today for our featured Friday. And you guys are in for a treat. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Janice Branta with Mary Kay Cosmetics, and I'm a senior consultant. And I am super excited about today because we're going to learn a little bit about finances. But I wanted to tell you why we were having, we have this mixer every Friday. Of course, we're quarantined in. You know, if you're smart, you're staying inside because of, um, of COVID. So we, we want to be able to reach out to our sisters and brothers um, and just reach out and, and mix and mingle with them, have a drink and just learn something new. Um, every week we get some gems. We learn um various different things that can help you in your business or you can help somebody in theirs. So we are really loving these mixers. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I started my Mary Kay business. Um, because of COVID-19, I was um, laid off from my job. I used to work for Delta Airlines in their safety department. Um, my dream job, I absolutely loved it, but um, they did a reorg. And so I was put under a lady that, um, quite frankly, I think she was kind of intimidated and she just, you know, just belittled me and made me feel like I wasn't part of the team and that I didn't know what I was doing and different things like that. Although I was doing the work of four or five people and helping her out with a lot of her things. And so it just made the job horrible for me. And so when I got laid off, I was like, mm, I don't really want to go back to work right away. Let me see what else is out there. So this opportunity with Mary Kay came up with, you know, $30 to get back in the business and do this virtual, um, just do this virtual opportunity. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. I, I don't have to go anywhere. I can touch people and make people feel good. I'm there. So this is where I'm at. And we're using our platform to just kind of widen it out and and just bring everybody into a fold and hopefully we can learn um, some things about each other and have gained some valuable resources. So tonight we have the amazing Tracy Willard and I'm gonna have Joni Faulkner take it away and just kind of tell a little bit about herself and introduce Tracy. All right, thank you so much, Janice. Hey, many of you may know and many of you may not know, but Janice Branto is my sister. We are the two oldest of eight siblings. Um, you know, our dad is a retired police chief of uh, in our hometown. And we are both a sister-sister team here with Mary Kay Cosmetics. And I am loving this. I love this platform, you know, of the Featured Fridays. You know, we both collaborated together to just come up with something that you know, it's not Mary Kay, but it gives us a way to network with women, you know, because of this quarantine. And um, a little bit about my background with Mary Kay is I have been in Mary Kay for 20 years, and I am celebrating that this year. And what got me into the business is prior to this, I was a business banker with um with the uh, with banking, you know, with the uh, Wells Fargo Bank was the last bank that I left that because but I've worked at various banks. Okay. And a lady came to us when I was working at First National Bank in Omaha, Nebraska. She was a white sharp lady. Now her name was Elizabeth Janetta. I never forget her. We were all like tellers in the teller line. Right. And she said, would you like to have a skincare class? And I looked at my girlfriend, I was like, I'm not having one, but are you? And she said, yes, we have one. And so we came to her class. That lady was sharp and she demonstrated the products. And you know, we all work our corporate jobs, but still didn't have the money to buy the set. Cause I fell in love with Mary Kay right when I had put it on my face, right? So I said, okay. She told me, you know, you have a little plan where you can just split it up and you can take it home tonight. So I wrote her two checks and I left with my Mary Kay. And that's how I've gotten involved with Mary Kay. Make a long story short, I've been in Mary Kay ever since then and never gave it up. Always done it alongside with my banking. And I'm so glad to have been able to be a part of this, this company. Now, Miss Tracy Willard. Oh my gosh, she is a treat. I've known Miss Tracy for a long time, but I believe I met her via the church. 
via way of the church. And I did. I, I went to school with her brother and didn't put two and two together that I knew her brother, right? It's so crazy. Well, anyway, she's good friends with my our cousin, Barbara, Barbara Abram. And I know that we've connected via Barbara. I remember that, you know, Tracy. And so we've just been connecting through Facebook and keeping in touch ever since then. So I'm so excited to introduce to you Miss Tracy Willard of Prime America. Take it away, Miss Tracy. And thank you so much for being a part of us tonight. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I thank you for this opportunity. Um, I always get nervous speaking in front of people. I don't like to be the center of attention, but <laughs> I hope I can bring some value tonight as far as finances. Um, I've been in Primary for Financial Services for a short time now, and um, the mission of, and I have my notes here, so excuse me for looking down. Um, our mission, the mission statement of Prime America, which I take as my own as well, is to help families earn income and become property protected debt-free and financially independent. And I think that's something that every person, every family would want. I mean, who wants debt and who, who wouldn't want to be financially free? Um, but how, how do you get there? How do you do that? What does it look like, you know, that, that road to financial freedom? But Primerica, um, we are, our home office is in Duluth, Georgia, in the great state of Georgia. And um, they have more than 2,000 dedicated home office employees that help us in the field. So it's, it's not a little something. Um, we are a leading provider of financial products um, for middle income families. We have, um, I know, well over 126,000 licensed representatives in the field throughout the um, United States and Canada. Um, we're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Our ticker mark is PRI been in business since 1977. So the company, the business has been around, the company has been around for a while. Um, approximately 5 million lives insured and more than 2 million investment clients. I think it's way over that now. So we've been awarded things. One was um, uh, by Forbes magazine, recognized Primerica as being among the best companies for women in the workplace. And um, also most trustworthy financial company. We've had the Dow Bar Award 15 years running for our mutual funds, uh, rated A plus by uh, AM Best. So those are the things we were in this year for Fortune Magazine recognized us for uh, among the top 1,000 companies, which I think is, um, is great. That, that says a lot about Primerica. Um, when I first looked at this company, they kind of gave some stats about finances and really was a, an eye opener. Um, and I'm just gonna share with you some of the stats that they had because you know sometimes we get in our own bubble and we don't really know what's going on with everybody else or what's going on in, 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 in our country, our community, our city. But here are some, some um, stats about finances. Um, this is from cnbc.com. Just 40% of Americans could pay an unexpected $1,000 expense. So only 40% of America, if there was an emergency, can put their hand on $1,000. That's a lot of money to a lot of people. 21% mm -hmm. of Americans have nothing saved for the future, and 67% says they'll outlive their retirement savings. That's scary. Yeah. That's a large amount of people that will outlive their um, retirement savings. I mean, it's not a good thing at 65 or 70, you feel like you have to work, have to work, not by choice. Americans have $1.4 trillion in outstanding student loan debt. Millions of Americans are uh, one missed paycheck away from poverty with four in 10 considered liquid asset poor or without enough money saved to cope with the sudden income disruption. As we see with COVID-19, mm -hmm. there's a lot of people hurting. Can you imagine how different it would be if a lot of those people had three to six months um, of their income put away with a difference that would have made? So um, we, we do have some financial issues in our country. Um, I was looking at another presentation and then they start focusing on the women. Um, let me back up. I meant to say I am... Uh, tell you a little bit about myself. That's what I wanted to start. I am married, 
been married for, we got married in 2003, I lose track. Um, have two children, two boys. Um, my oldest is 31. My youngest passed away when he was 19. He had an open, he had a heart transplant and um, his heart, his body began to reject it and he passed away. But he had a little boy that was 16 months old when he passed away. I mean, I was livid when he told me that he had a baby coming, but now I understand why. And I'm so grateful for him. And he's 11 years old now. Um, so I grew up with three brothers, two sons and a grandson. Just no girls out the deal. But that's all good. God knew what he was doing. So uh, I worked at Mutual of Omaha for 26 years. It's the largest insurance company here in Omaha, Nebraska. They eliminated my position. I always wanted to leave Mutual, but never had the guts to do so. Um, and, or was financially able to do so. So um, they took care of that for me. So Janice, I understand what you mean and where you're coming from. You know, a lot of times you leave before you want to, but um, God always have a plan. And, and we have to really trust God in all, all things, you know, regardless of what it is. But it worked out. I worked in OPS um, for about three, four years. I remember when my kids got out of school, I made a statement. I said, whoo, thank God I never have to deal with Omaha Public School. And I heard this little voice in my head say, what about the other kids? And I'm like, dang, okay, you're right. You know, sometimes you think you're done with something, but you're, you're not. And I would never guess I would be an OPS <laughs> working with them kids. But I worked with fifth graders. I was a paraprofessional. And uh, it was a great eye-opener about our school system. You know, a lot of times you don't know what's going on inside the schools until you're inside the school, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it was really an eye-opener. But now I'm part-time at UPS because I need some benefits. And um, I thank God it's part-time so I can still um, build my business. But back to some stats about the women. I've always had a heart for women, just want to empower women. And when I seen these stats, I'm like, oh my. Because if you think about it, with women, they're building their own business. We are so used to doing everything for everybody. You know, we work all day, we work that job, then we got to come home and then here we are in part two you know, so you take care of the family and then you try to build your business and it becomes a lot. And when you marry, you really have to have a buy-in from your, your spouse to be that supportive role. You know, um, can you get dinner tonight? Uh, can you help me with laundry? So it's always a challenge for women because we, we always doing so much for everybody else and we just kind of leave ourselves out. So I've always had a heart to minister to women. I was, um, had a passion for a prison ministry and uh, for some reason the Native Americans, which is something that was always on my heart. So as um, I'm gonna share some stats with you for women when it comes to finance, it says women start their careers deeper in debt than male peers. Women hold 65% of all student loan debt. That was interesting. In entry level positions, women are 18% less likely than their male peers to receive a promotion. And then it says on the top end, only 20% of the senior level women make it to the C-suit, like CEOs and CFOs, et cetera. Uh, women make between 78 cents and 80 cents for every dollar a man makes in the same job. So it says the good news is more women than men earn college degrees. But women leave college with more student loan debt than men and then women are more likely to work lower paying jobs. So we're getting an education, but it doesn't seem like it's really a, a, as fair of an exchange, you know, for women. Um, women aren't investing as much or as often as men. 71% of the assets women control are cash, which cannot grow and result in less spending power over time due to inflation. So if you keep your money in a shoebox somewhere, that's, that money is not keeping up with inflation. And uh, women are just not known to invest as much as men. So that was an interesting statement as well. Women are also, also three times more likely than men to retire earlier than expected so they can become a family caregiver. Did I read that right? Women are also three times more likely than men to retire earlier than expected so they can become family caregivers. And I could, I could see that happening. 
The financial challenges women face to achieve financial security and retirement can be huge. And with the rising cost of healthcare, as well as other deep-seated economic factors at play, the anxiety has heightened considerably. So with Primerica, what we do um, at Primerica, we're like the marketing arm for a lot of different companies. We're like the um, Amazon of financial services. So I'm gonna hold this up. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Just wanna hold up. These are some of the companies that we um, are the marketing arm for. We do business with these companies. Primerica, as you see, is in the middle. We, um, you see on the right side, these are the investing companies um, for retirement, mutual funds for savings. Um, life insurance is the only company that we own because we feel that we do life insurance like no other. We can do it better. Um, and then we have some other ancillary company uh, products that we do for uh, so our security, like our ID theft. We have prepaid legal. Um, we're going to start doing mortgages um, here pretty soon. Um, Vivint, a security system, is state of the art. So we're like the marketing arm just to help safeguard families financially and then in other ways, ID theft. So uh, those are some other things that we do. So um, I want to talk a little bit about our financial house. So our financial house, I mean, when you're building a house, which uses the first thing that is built on a house? The foundation. The foundation. Because without a foundation, how can a house stand, right? So in our, fin in our financial house, our, finance, our foundation is... I'm going to draw a little house. Don't talk about my drawing, y'all. Can y'all see this? Uh -huh. The foundation is life insurance. Why is it life insurance? If you have two husband and wife and one were to pass away, they're both working, and one were to pass away, what's going to happen to the surviving spouse and those children? So if you have any little bit of savings, it's not going to last long. Life insurance, when I was growing up, it was like life insurance to me was just to bury the family member. But life insurance really should be called uh, income protection because that's really what it's about. It's, it's enough money to protect the family. How much money, if one of those people in the family were to pass away, how much money would the other spouse and children need to survive? And you have to, if you, if you have a person making $100,000 a year in income, a $100,000 policy is not sufficient because how long will that last? About a year or so. If they're living off $100,000 and they only have a $100,000 policy, it's not going to go very far. But if they had a million dollar policy, how long would that money last? So life insurance is really, um, is really the, the foundation. Um, what I like to call like 1A, up here would be our legal protection and that's up top and when you when you're building a house you build a foundation well you don't put things inside the house until you put the roof on right so the legal protection is like the uh, protection for the household so you say legal protection well what do you mean by that well first of all when you have children especially I'm going to write it all out and then show it to you. The first thing you need is a will. If you were to pass away, who's going to take care of the children? The next thing you need is a living will. And the third thing is power of attorney. So your will, if you have children, let's say a, a husband and wife, and both pass away at the same time, what's going to happen to the children? Is it in writing anywhere? And this is what we share with families because mm -hmm. um, it happens. You know, it, it happens. You hope it doesn't, but what what if it does? So we talk to families like um, to have that in place. Um, a will is very important to have in place. Another thing is a living oh. will. How many families? have stopped talking to each other Ooh. at it when you have a family member that um, can't speak for themselves on life support. Now you have to make a decision. 
and then one say, well, she wouldn't want to live like that. And the other say, well, she wouldn't want you to take her, him or her off life support. But if having a living will really simplify it for the family, because I can't imagine, I can't imagine if my son, when he passed away, if he was on life support and I had to make that decision. So when you have that conversation with, with family members, getting them writing, this is what I want, you know, wait six months in case I recover. And if I don't, take me off life support or I don't want to be on life support at all. But everybody have their own will. And I think it's important to put it in writing. The third thing, as you see up here, is power of attorney, right? Power of attorney is important, especially with um, husband and wife. And um, there was a story that I had heard that this is real life that really actually happened. Um, husband and wife, he left, he was on vacation, so not vacation, he was working away from home, had a head on collision, um, ended up on life support, quadriplegic. So they had, um, she didn't work, they had one child, so she decided, well, let's, let's sell the, I'll sell the house. And I think they had, um, at that time, like a half million dollars of um, equity in their home. So she said, well, unload the house. We'll move closer to husband, you know, get a little small place so we can go back and forth and, and visit him. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened was because um, where they live, the real estate agreement, both of them had to sign. He's in a coma. He can't sign. So what ended up happening is they lost everything because they had no power of attorney to say if one is not able to make any financial decision, the other has the authority to do so. And th these are things that we just bring to families because it's things that a lot of times you don't think about stuff until it happens. Well, then it's too late. So um, those are things that, and we have a um, program with prepaid legal. I know some of you have probably heard about prepaid legal. Well, prepaid legal for a minimum amount of month, these things are included. And you can have this stuff set up for your family with the prepaid legal um, for your protection. And it's just not for these things, but anything. Um, another story with prepaid legal, uh, this gentleman was going to buy a brand new home. He had his attorneys look over all their paperwork before they sign for the home. Because if anybody has bought a home, you got your pen ready, you're like, where do I sign? It seems like you signed it for 30 minutes. And you're like, oh my God, what did I just do? Because who sit and read that stuff? And if you did read it, do you know what you're reading? This particular guy took his paperwork to his attorney, he had prepaid legal. He said, tell him to take that off, take that off, take that off. And if they don't take this off, we'll close your house and we'll do it for less money. So he went and told him, he said, take this off, this off, that's off. And if you don't, my attorney said he'll close and there'll be less money. You know how much money it saved him? Anybody want to guess? Eleven. How much? I want to say maybe five hundred dollars or more. <laughs> five hundred or more? Like ten thousand. Ten thousand. Eleven thousand mm. dollars. Because he had attorneys with prepaid legal. They looked over the document and said, take this off, this off. This. Because we'll, we don't know what that stuff is. Do, I mean, who, unless you go to law school, a lot of times we don't know our rights with things. You know, um, homeowners association, it was a tree dripping this brown stuff on his brand new car. He called and he did nothing about it, called his attorney. He said, we'll send him a letter. He said, they come, oh, we didn't know you were, you were uh, uh, unsatisfied and that was happening, da, 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 da. They did know. He said, well, I'll tell you what, you talk to my attorney, I have nothing to do with it, and hung up the phone on him. He said, next morning, he heard all this noise. He looked out the window. They were cutting down the tree and replaced it. I don't know what them attorneys put in those letters, but it worked. You can write a letter all day long, but when it comes from attorney, that gets people attention. So that's one thing about, I just wanted to kind of touch on the um, legal part because we need someone in our corner fighting for us, right? The other thing, the next thing that we need in our financial house, can anybody guess? After you have your life insurance in place, you're legal, you got your family covered, 
what do you think the next thing you would need in your financial house? It's something to do with medical, isn't it? Medical? Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was working in banking, it's something. I can't remember. You hit on all of them, but there's something else. There was one more thing. <laughs> I can't remember. Emergency fund. Remember oh. some of those stats that we were talking about? Emergency fund. That is something that um, that would be the next thing to have in place to start putting money aside for when um, emergency come up, mm -hmm. and they will. It's not if, it's when. You know, your your furnace go out. That's the last thing you want to happen in the middle of winter. Your hot water heater, your car go out. So it's good to have an emergency fund because if you don't have a credit card, which is not the best thing to charge up, you know, but that's the next option. You don't have emergency fund, you don't have to charge it. Now you have more debt, right? So emergency fund is, is uh, Im important. The next thing, what do you think that would be that you need to start saving for? Anybody have any ideas? Want to guess? Is it too late in the evening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Retirement. We got to save for retirement. And then the next thing would be college fund for your children. The, you know, some families say, you know, hey, I pay for my tuition, my college, they have to pay for theirs. You want to pay a little bit, you want to pay all of it. So I don't want my child to end up in debt. So this is what we do when we sit down in fam with families. We'll ask them, like, how much money do you have to start, start your financial house? Um, we'll get that dollar amount and we'll just... Um, work with that and, and get them started with the life insurance and then we begin to build you know sometimes people change jobs they get raises or they come into an inheritance or whatever might happen these are the things that we have um, them to do just kind of in this order to get a person a family in um, position to secure their home their financial house that makes sense yeah so um, what we do also with that financial house is we do what we call a financial needs analysis. And what that is, is you bring all your debt, your um, retirement, what you have saved, when would you like to retire? It factors in the inflation and things like that. Um, and it just kind of give you a, a GPS, like a roadmap for your finances. And that's something we do for people complimentary. And it's my understanding to have something like that done will be about it can cost you easy five hundred dollars, and and who who has that kind of money, you know, to spend for something like that? We offer ID theft, which is huge. Um, I, identity theft accounts for the largest dollar amount of theft every year in the United States. So it's it's huge. They say every seven seconds someone has their identity stolen, and on average, you spend a hundred hours personally attempting to restore um, a person's name and credit. So identity theft is huge. Um, our identity theft, it monitors um, emails and social security numbers, mother's maiden name. It's just a lot of stuff that, that it monitors. Um, we have auto and homeowners insurance. I spoke to my um, vice president yesterday and they sat with the family, saved them $1,800 a year on their homeowners insurance. The way our auto and homeowners insurance is, is, is 30 of the top providers in the nation. They'll give you a quote, have your driver's license, your um, declaration page. And among those 30s, 30 companies, they'll give you the best quote. And every six months, they will complimentary um, search and see if there is a better option for you out there. And that's just something that they, they just do. So that's kind of, um, I didn't really get into a lot of the investment because I don't, I'm working on getting my securities license. So I didn't really get into the uh, investment part of it because of that reason, uh, not being able to really get into the investments. But even what I shared today, getting a person, a family started is very important. Um, I've seen so many times, you know, here in the city, you hear of a shooting, somebody get killed. Next thing on the news, they have a GoFundMe because there's no life insurance. So um, if, if they get enough for the burial, what happens when they have children? What happens with the children? Who's going to take care of the children? And a lot of times that become a burden to someone else. Not that they don't want to do it, but it's a, it is a financial burden. 
if you make enough money to take care of yourself and now you just have three more children to take care of, that's, that's, a, that's hardship. So that's something that we um, really try and encourage people is, is the, the life insurance, emergency fund, retirement, college, and your legal. So um, that's kind of what I have. I hope that was helpful. Oh, that um, was awesome. That was so awesome. Had, so now we're going to open it up for question and answers. Tracy, thank you so much for that. I mean, I, I jotted a lot of notes down. <laughs> I was like, this is so good, you know. Janice has a question. Go ahead. Okay, so a single person, do they need life insurance? I mean, and if so, how much um, is it more important than having a like emergency fund or retirement savings or how would you rank that for a single person? I would say yes, it is important for, uh, it is important for a single person to have life insurance. Um, number one, their, their burial. Um, let's say it was someone that had a home and they weren't married and didn't have any children. Is there a niece they would like to leave it to? Um, is there a parents or someone that they would like to leave that to? You, you can help set somebody up. You know, might have nieces or sister or younger brother. This can be their, uh, take this and go to college or um, set someone else up. So that's, you know, a lot of people think I'm, I'm young, I'm single, I don't need life insurance. Well, I, th I think everyone to a certain degree, they do, yeah. you know, pay that house off and pass it on, you know. So yes, I agree. That's a great question. I know when I worked at uh, Wells Fargo Bank, we seen a lot of that, you know, where people did not have it set up for if something was to happen, you know, to their family members. And it was it was crazy. We were like, wow, you know, a lot of people don't have life insurance or maybe they don't think it's very important to have. But it really is, you know, because like you said, it is you caring about your family, basically setting them up if something, you know, something, you know, God forbid should happen to you that right. you're setting it up for them. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So it's proper, you know, and it's, yeah. yeah, it is. It is very important. And it's having the right type of insurance. We only deal with term life insurance. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Is, is anyone familiar with whole life? You have to explain it again. I'm familiar with the terms whole life and term life, but um, like I said, it's, uh, I need the explanation again on that. Okay. Whole life has a savings with it. You might hear people that you can borrow against it and, and all that. So it has a saving with it. Let's say a husband and wife had a $100,000 policy. And by the time they're 65, let's say it might accumulate $70,000 or $65,000 in the savings piece of it. Number one, you're paying for the benefit and you're paying for the savings, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the savings, there's nothing in there for the first three to five years. Nothing, it, it takes that long for it to build up. If you borrow against it, you're penalized. You have to pay it back with interest, but you're paying for it. Mm -hmm. If you borrow against it and that person passed away and it's not paid back, they deduct what you didn't pay back from the face value. Mm -hmm. So if a person die, you have Jane and John Doe, they each had $100,000, and let's say they had $40,000 saved up. If one passed away, how much money do you think the surviving spouse would get? They had $100,000. Hmm? For whole life insurance? For whole life. You're paying for the face value and the savings. Mm -hmm. So if one were to pass away, what would the surviving spouse receive? Probably nothing, because you said there wasn't anything in the savings, right? For the first three let's years. Say, let's say it, it, it accumulated to forty thousand dollars in savings, and they have a hundred thousand oh. value. You get one or the other. You don't mm -hmm. get both. You're paying for both, but you don't get both. You you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you would mm -hmm. only get the hundred thousand if you choose that. If you have the hundred thousand face value. Mm, let's say John and Jane. So they have a whole mm -hmm. life insurance. Each one of them had 100K, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say um, they had it for a long time. And let's say they had 40,000 in savings. Okay. Okay. They wouldn't get the 140. 
they would get the 100,000. The insurance company keeps the 40, the savings. What? So how much is the insurance company actually paying? 60. That's 60. If you take mm -hmm. 40 that they keep from the 100,000, they're only paying you 60, but what did you pay for? You paid for the 100. You paid 140, didn't you? Paying for all wow. of that, but you don't get it all. <laughs> oh. People don't know that. And That's people are like, they, they do it. They're taking my money. <laughs> I want my money. <laughs> what do you think they're doing with that money? They're investing that money. They're making money. But you know, they're using other people's money. I came from banking, and that's exactly what they taught us. You're using other people's money to make money. That's what they do. That's what they're doing, banking and financing. But have man, heard, that much? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever heard the rule of 72? Yep. <laughs> No, I haven't. Well, that's that. crazy. So we need you, Tracy. So Tracy, now that we know that you're in Prime America, what can we do to get in touch with you, you know, for counseling? Like, I know, like, look, I'm 54 and I have grandbabies and I have a mm -hmm. daughter, you know, mm -hmm. and I know I still need to get some things tightened up, even though I have a little bit of knowledge of it, but I still need to get some things tightened up. You know, what should we do? I mean, what can we do well, to get in touch? <laughs> we, we can via Zoom. We can do a financial needs analysis. We can do that. Um, and that just kind of give you a roadmap. Now, um, to write a life policy or do any business would be a little different because um, I'm only licensed in the state of Nebraska. So mm -hmm. you're Atlanta. Stephanie, where are you at? I'm in um, Atlanta. In Atlanta. And Amy? Atlanta, Atlanta too? Yeah. I read <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I was on mute. Atlanta. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I have I have a brother in Atlanta, and I told him I said, you know, I'll I'll pay to have a license there if you're gonna drum up a little business, you know, to right. to make make. It, I I don't have a problem doing it. I'll do that, you know. Yeah. And it's not that you have to. I have to take a test or anything like that. But it's just have a a non residential license. But that's interesting, Tracy, because you said you're you, that you said that the home t the home company is based in Duluth, Georgia. So why mm -hmm. can't you guys cross lines? You know, I remember when I was working for Wells Fargo Bank and we bought out some other bank, you know, that was in Georgia. I remember I couldn't open up checking accounts for them in Georgia, but then we bought them out. I can't remember the name of the other bank. It was a bank that was big with the uh, student loans. So we bought mm -hmm. them out. Then mm -hmm. I was able to open up checking accounts for everybody in Georgia. So do you yeah. think they'll ever do that with your company? I don't think that it's not really the company. It's the, um, it's the insurance industry, FINRA, mm -hmm. with, the, uh -huh. um, with the securities. It's almost like, you know, when you go to college, mm -hmm. you pay a non-resident because you don't live in that state. You pay a higher tuition. Um, yeah. And, and that's just like, now real estate is a little different because real estate, to my understanding, they have, um, and I can't think of the term, but like Nebraska and Iowa is like, uh, you can pay a fee and you don't have to take another test, but anywhere else you would have to retest. Okay. Um, but all it is, is just a matter of just paying a, a fee. And it's different for every state. It might be 50 for one, it might be 150. It's just paying that non-resident Without taking a test, you just have a non-resident license mm -hmm. in that state. You're not a resident there, but you're able to write business there. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, because uh, like I wanted to get into Prime America just because of writing. I wanted my securities license because God's been telling me to get back into uh, finance, but it's not going back to the corporate world. It's to open up my own LLC so I can be a financial coach you know, to yes. teach people, because there's a lot of people out there that are still financially illiterate, you know, and we need that out here, especially our communities, and we really oh, need yeah. that now more than ever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what intrigued me about uh, Prime America. Yes, big time, and Prime America pay for your licenses. You know, you, nice. you can, it, it can cost 500 and up mm -hmm. for license. And, and you have to be a part of a financing company to get your securities license. Mm -hmm. You have to be a mm -hmm. part of that. You can't get it if you're not a part of a financing company. That's so that's true. what I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that's like even in real estate, you have a real estate license. You have to hang that license with a broker. You have to have a broker overseeing yep. you. You just can't mm -hmm. go out there and just willy nilly doing, not if you're licensed. Uh, you right. can on your own, you know, do real estate like that. But yeah. Wow. Yeah, so of, and you know, when you think about it, 
businesses that are heavy, heavily regulated are the, the um, professions that make good money because they're mm -hmm. regulated. So mm -hmm. financing, your, your doctors, your lawyers, you know, and things like that. So oh, yeah. um, you are more than welcome to give me a call. <laughs> okay. And you start with the financial needs analysis. And this is, it's like a roadmap. It does a budget for you in there. You put in everything. It, it does the budget. We do this complimentary for people because our goal is just to help people get in a better financial situation. Mm -hmm. This COVID-19 thing, was an eye opener. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, um, businesses, you know, it, it's just crazy. Is who would have thought that we would be where we are today, you know? Exactly. But um, I, I can give you my number if that's what you all want to do. You want to take down my number? Yeah, Where's not you? over. We're recording, so not over recording, but we will uh, like get your information. You Joni know, so has my number. Get in touch yeah. with Joan. Um, she has my. I mean, you're. You're, you're free to give me a call and I'll send you yes. my email as well and then you can share it with whoever um, would like to but yeah we, we can do okay. that Absolutely. anybody else have any questions I, you have like I do time? okay I'm sorry go ahead I'm sorry I wanted to know about the um, rule of 72 what is that the rule of 72 what that is if you take let's say you have your um, money in um, a CD with 3% interest. Mm -hmm. 72 divided by 3 is, 20, is that 24? No. Yes, 3. So it would take 24 years for your money to double. Mm. Yep. Okay. So, um, if, it's, if you have your money in, let's say, is 12%. Mutual fund, the stocks or whatever. Um, that's every six years it, it takes for your money to double. So when you think about it, the average person, the savings account, do you get anything on the savings account? Let's say you get 1%. It would take you 72 years before that $10,000 would double. That's the a long bank, time. <laughs> that's a long time. Who has that kind of time? You know, so that's the rule of 72. So if you're getting a little bit of interest, it's going to take longer. The smaller the interest, the longer it's going to take for your money to double. Mm -hmm. But what we teach people is eliminate the middleman, your CDs, your banks, things like that. And then you invest your money in the global economy and get a better return for your money. So it, it, it doubles faster than just sitting it in a bank. And, and that's the rule of 72. Now, the bank know how that works and insurance companies. But when you put your money in the bank, you think they're not investing that money and getting that type of return? Of course they do. And a higher interest rate? Mm -hmm. They'll give you a little 1% of that, but they're getting a lot more return, a higher mm -hmm. interest rate on their money. So these are the things that we try and educate families on, you know, so just make better, better decisions with, with their money. So would you say Prime America is more like an educator? Basically, you guys are empowering and, and equipping and educating people for uh, better financing. Absolutely. That's what good. I can also do, we have this book, um, How Money Works, and I have an electronic copy that I can email Ooh. it if you want it. Yeah. Oh, and yes. I, yes. A lot of information. And then um, we also have, I, I'm, I'm with a, a a group and they do email campaigns. They do um, educational webinars. They're free. Oh, really? That's awesome. So if yeah, you are interested, mm -hmm. you can send that to our messenger group and then I we can, it's easy to forward that on, you know, to our other groups in messenger too. Okay. If you contact, um, cause you have to register for it. So if okay. you your, your name and, and if you want me to call you your phone number, but definitely your email. I'll get I'll email that out to everybody and then you can register. It's usually okay. on Monday at seven o'clock central time. Um, and then what they do, they used to do it once a week, but now what they're doing is once you register every so many days within that 30 day period, you get all the 12 educational webinars. And these are people that's been in the business. These are people that they know what they're talking about. They've been doing it for a long time. And it's, it's free. All it costs you is your time. 
Wow. And it's called How Many Works? That is, it's like a client education webinar. Okay. There are people in Primerica that is doing that, but they're from all over the country. And they come together and they do the little webinars educating every, people like us, middle, Ameri middle American people, um, middle income people. Um, so it's just education. They do budgets. They'll get into investing. They talk about retirement. They cover everything that's going to be beneficial to your your financial um, your that's financial. Because y'all all know here in Mary Kay, we're going to be making more money. We need to invest it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Learn to make your money grow. You know, mm. we we work hard for our money, so we need to our money to work just as hard for us. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. But this is a good book. It just has a lot of good information. It really just talks about everything that we do at Primerica, but it's just some really good financial information. And I, like I said, I have an electronic copy that I can email everyone. Now, do you have a, um, do you have a website that yeah, I don't, I don't mind you sharing like your website information because I'll upload this and you just never know who sees the video so people can find you. Okay. My website I always get it backwards. <laughs> My website is primerica.com forward slash and then Tracy Willard, T R A C E Y W I L L A R D. So primerica.com forward slash Tracy Willard. All right, check that website out. <laughs> okay, okay. So hope this was helpful. Thank you. Oh, it was awesome. Oh my Thank God. You. Anybody else have any questions? Well, Janice, do you, would you like to say some closing remarks? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, Tracy, this was so enlightening and thank you for sharing all of that information with us. Absolutely. And I look forward to getting the information um, from the booklet that you're going to share and um, some of those seminars. I think I need to, <laughs> to take <laughs> take part in and, and a little bit more literate about my finances. Um, so we greatly appreciate you taking your time sharing with us. Like I said, I'll upload this video and, you know, people can find it and I'll send y'all the link so you can, you, you know, you can send it to other people as well. Um, but it was great information and I'm, I'm so happy that you took the time to share with us. Um, and ladies, mm -hmm. all of you that are on, thank you so much for joining us. This is what yeah. we do every Friday at 7.30. So invite your friends, your family, um, anybody, anybody in your tribe, because you see, it's just like amazing information. And some of the things we never knew. Like, I didn't know anything about the rule of 72. Mm -hmm. I can get my money out that bank. Okay. <laughs> really? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So we, um, we're good, and we just pray that your business grows by leaps and bounds. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And my closing remarks are: I really appreciate you, Miss Tracy. Oh my God! And thank you so much. You know, for being a part of Joni's Divine Divas, and also taking your time for being here to give us that knowledge. You know, you dropped some gems on us, and that was really good. And we needed that. And thank you so much for that. And thank you, Amy and Stephanie and Denise for being on. Janice for being on. You guys are all the best. Oh my God, I'm just so excited. And don't you feel good when we can network? And, and that's what we wanted this to be. Mm -hmm. Just a network, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. how it was before mm -hmm. pre-COVID when we can go out yeah. and just pass out your business cards, you know, in an environment. Right. It's just our environment right now, for now. <laughs> For now, gets back, you know, it's, and, yeah. and it feels good to, you know, just to swap out our information and be able to use it for the good of the community. So thank you so much for that, Miss Tracy. Um, Tracy, do you want to have any closing remarks before we close? I just want to thank you and Janice for this opportunity. I, I really do. Um, I appreciate it. And just want to encourage you all to um, sign up for the, the client webinars because yeah. I think you find the information um, very helpful and very useful and be money savvy learn yeah. to make money work for you you know yeah. learn to make money while you sleep you know and that's that's what you want to do so I just encourage mm -hmm. us just women you know to, to do anything when a lot of have goals and you want to help people you want to uh, start an organization and it takes money 
So you're in a good company, Mary Kay and other companies. Um, work hard, give it your all, you know, dream big, dream big. Dream big. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, and y'all have a wonderful evening. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.